I'm Chris Troy, host of St. Clair County Risa's Moment in History, and I'm back in Croswell, Michigan, here at the Michigan Sugar Company. Now, with the decline of the lumbering industry in the late 1800s, most of the land was virtually left unusable due to the massive expanse of tree stumps left behind from the clearing of the pine forests. State and local leaders were searching for a substitute for jobs and money for the region that had been generated earlier by the lumber barons, who were now gone. A solution was needed that could be replenished each year, creating a stable economic base for the region. Enter the sugar beet. Let's go back to 1839, when Lucius Lyon, who was a skilled potato grower, decided he could use his talents to grow sugar beets. Many of you may know the name Lucius Lyon, because this was the same man who surveyed much of the lower peninsula of Michigan, traveling by foot and horseback, and was given the task of rebuilding the Fort Gratiot Lighthouse in 1829. Lucius's growing project was a success, but his manufacturing system that he devised was a complete failure, closing the door on sugar beets for the next 45 years. Interest in sugar beets was not revived until 1884, when Joseph Seaman, a Saginaw printer, happened to see how well the sugar beet industry was doing for the people in the region of Germany that he had recently visited. Another trip convinced him to send a sample of the seeds to his partner who forwarded them to Dr. Robert C. Kinsey, professor of chemistry at the Michigan State Agricultural College, now known as Michigan State University. Dr. Kinsey's enthusiasm for the beet's potential in the region earned him the title of father of the Michigan beet sugar industry. He imported 1,500 pounds of seeds from France and distributed them to farmers across Michigan. The success of the planting helped encourage people to clear the stumps to better utilize the valuable acreage. Funds were raised by the boiler manufacturer Harry T. Wicks, Thomas A. Harvey, and grain merchant George B. Morley to underwrite best growing tests. Invitations to farmers to receive seeds and instructions were issued. This resulted in bringing samples of beets from over 600 farms to Dr. Kenzie's laboratory. Three crops of beets, he said, grown in three successful years, are worth as much as one crop of pine trees, which required a hundred years to mature. Suddenly, the switch from trees to beets brought the stump field back to life. In 1897, the Michigan legislature passed a bill offering the beet processors a bounty for one cent per pound of sugar produced in Michigan from Michigan-grown sugar beets. The Pioneer Michigan Sugar Company was organized on December 9, 1897, building its first factory in Bay City, Michigan. In 1898, farmers harvested an average of 32,047 tons of sugar beets. The farmers were paid an average of $4.51 per ton of beets. This amount immediately classified sugar beets as a premier cash crop. Factories sprang up statewide from Holland, Alma, Owasso, and Marine City just to name a few. In 1905, though, the Michigan sugar beet manufacturing industry began to encounter difficult times. Seven factories had closed, mostly because many farmers had simply no interest in growing sugar beets, and while the sugar price dropped due to World War I, forcing many other plants to close as well. In 1906, Henry Osborne Havemeyer, who was an American entrepreneur, almost single-handedly saved the industry by brokering a deal that would merge the stock interest of six companies forming what would be known as the Michigan Sugar Company on August 20th, 1906. One of those processing plants was the Sanilac Sugar Refinery Company of Croswell. Today, the Michigan Sugar Company is the only remaining sugar company in the state and third largest in the United States. Its combined factories have a beet slicing capacity of 22,000 tons per day and the ability to produce 1 billion pounds of sugar a year, which markets under its name Pioneer and Big Chief brand. Remaining locally grown and owned for 100 years, this is the Michigan Sugar Company. For Moment in History Extra, I'm Chris Troy, reminding you all that history lives in all of us.